Today, we're gonna to talk about what kind of lenses I think you should buy for a video, depending on what it is that you're shooting, because like, let's be completely honest, there's tons of different lenses out there. And when you're starting out, it's really, really hard to know what kind of lens that you should buy and what kind of look that lens will give you and why should you have an F 1.8 aperture when you can buy that lens for way less. I'm just gonna start off by saying hi to everyone that has joined in here lately because there's been like a huge increase of subscribers on the channel in the latest couple of months, like insane. I think in the last month, we actually grew by like 28,000 subscribers. That's just mind blowing. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks so much for all the support. And if this is your first time watching me, then you might wanna consider hitting that subscribe button because you no, know, that'd be appreciated. So when I was starting out shooting videos, I actually had a Sony a6300, which was like actually a really good camera. I really like that one. But when I bought my first lens for that camera, I didn't really know what lens to buy. But what I did know was that I wanted to have a lens that I could vlog with, a lens that I could shoot B-roll with, and a lens that had a like shallow depth of field. So the lens that I did eventually buy was the Sigma 16 millimeter f 1.4, which is a really, really good lens for crop sensor cameras, but it's also like really limited because you only have one focal length. You can't zoom or anything like that. And it's gonna give you quite a wide field of view. So you can't get those like really close B-roll shots without actually being like this close to your subject. And I wish that I'd known what I know now when I was starting out, because then it would be so much easier to put my money into that. I'm gonna try to help you guide you towards the lens that is gonna suit you the best. So I thought I'd go through my current kit and tell you what I use the lenses for, and then you maybe will find some kind of like red thread to the lens that you wanna buy, and then you can just like, oh, I'm gonna get that lens. So we're gonna start off at the widest end with 16 to 35 millimeter lens, which is a really good lens. And I gotta say, it's probably my favorite lens that I got in my kit right now. Like one of my two favorites. And no matter if you're shooting on Sony, Nikon or Canon cameras or Fuji, or I don't know, Panasonic, I think. Do they even make cameras? This is a focal length that will be available. The lens that I got is an f4 aperture and the more expensive lens is gonna be an f2.8 aperture. So if you're doing a lot of low light photography or shooting a lot of indoor stuff, then you probably like want to go with the 2.8 aperture because it's also gonna give you a like way more blurred out background than the f4 but then again like personally i do think that f4 is more than enough because i've never had any kind of issues with this lens not being like bright enough and the good thing with the f4 lenses are that they are usually like stabilized and they have this like built-in stabilization into the lens which make them more steady when you're doing handle stuff and i'm using this lens exclusively when i'm shooting my videos here at the office and when i'm vlogging so it just feels way more smooth it feels like you're following along, you know? And the cool thing with this focal length when you're shooting on Sony full frame cameras is that you can actually crop in to Super 35 mode, which gives you an APS-C crop. And that basically gives your field of view an equivalent to a 55 millimeter lens, which is really good. The next lens that I got is a 24 millimeter F 1.4 lens. And this is a really good lens to use, especially if you're like shooting in a lot of low light situations, maybe at night or inside or something like that because the f1.4 aperture will let in so much more light to your camera sensor than if you were to have a 2.8 version of the same lens it's also a really expensive lens and i mainly use it for specific shoots or street photography or something like that next up we got the 2875 or the 2470 i'm gonna like categorize them in the same category because it's like 2875 is not as wide as the 2470 but it's really damn close, right? This is probably like the absolute most versatile lens that I got in my kit right now. And the reason that this lens is so good is because it has a 2.8 aperture all the way through the lens. So no matter if you're at 28 millimeters or 75 millimeters, you are gonna have that 2.8 aperture all the way through. 
And the reason that is so good is because you can get completely different looks all the way through the different focal lengths that the zoom lens will give you. And that lens is probably like one of my absolute go-to lenses when I'm doing any kind of client work, any kind of events or anything like that, because it's just such a good focal length. The next lens that I got in my kit is an 85 millimeter f 1.8 lens. And it is a really good lens, like really good at actually like isolating your subject, giving you that really shallow depth of field, compressed look, and all that but to be completely honest the biggest reason that I actually bought this lens was because of Peter McKinnon because he posted this video like one year ago or something like that where he said like the b-roll king and then was 85 millimeter lens and I thought like that looks really good I really need to have that lens to be able to shoot like that but I think that 85 millimeter is a bit too narrow when you're shooting video because like you have to be so far away and you can't really get that close to your subject and when you're shooting a at 85 millimeters it's also gonna be really hard to shoot a lot of handheld footage because you're gonna like right now I barely even touch it it's actually like left here at the office most of the time. The last lens that I got in my kit is the 7200 f4 lens and this is a really good lens that will also be available in f2.8 apertures as well but personally I do think like the f4 works really good because I mainly use this lens when I'm outside shooting and there's a lot of light that the camera can take in. The main purpose of this lens in my kit right now is to shoot time lapses. Yeah, that's basically it. And that is all the lenses that I got in my kit right now. So, which lenses do I use the most? The 1635 is without a doubt the lens that I use the absolute most for my videos and mainly because I'm vlogging I'm recording YouTube videos here at the studio I'm recording YouTube videos outside behind the scenes and stuff like that and this is a really good lens to get that really wide field of view and try to get as much as you can into your shot but I am not using the 1635 when I'm shooting any kind of client videos or anything like that because I do think that the f4 aperture is a little bit limited to give you that really high quality out of focus background blur thing that you want to have in professional videos. The 24 millimeter lens is probably my go-to lens and my most favorite lens right now when it comes to photos, not when it comes to videos, because I do think that shooting at f1.4 is really, really hard. And that is because you have this like razor thin depth of field. So if you just move the camera like that, the depth of field is gonna move really quickly, even though you don't want to. So I would say like, if you're doing static establishing shots with that lens, it's a really good lens and it is freaking awesome to shoot photos with. But when it comes to video, I do think it's way too limited because it's not gonna be as versatile as the 1635, for example. And you already have the 24 millimeter covered in the 1635 lens. And then we have the 24 to 70 or the 28 to 75 in my case, which is without a doubt the lens that I use the most when it comes to client work, professional videos, you know, anything like that. And I highly, highly recommend you to check that out because it's a really good focal length to have. Like 24 to 70 is probably the focal length that you wanna have when you're shooting video to be able to do a lot of run and gun filmmaking. But it's also gonna depend on what kind of look that you're after and what kind of videos that it is that you wanna shoot. The 85 millimeter is not something that I would recommend you to buy when you're shooting video. I know that I did a video a while back talking about this lens as my favorite video lens for Sony cameras, but that, you know, opinions change and experiences change as well. And I think that that lens is way too limited when you're doing a lot of run and gun video and you wanna be able to take something else to shoot those really wide shots and maybe go a little bit narrow and you wanna run back and forth. So I do think that the 24 to 70 or 28 to 75 f2.8 is gonna be the better option than the 85 millimeter. And when it comes to the 7200, I do think it has its place Absolutely. In my case, I really like to use it to get those really like compressed time lapses that you can't get with any other lens. So again, like most of the videos that I do, I'm shooting with the 1635 or the Tamron 2875. So if I were to buy my kit today with the knowledge that I got now, I would probably start out with 1635 because I really like to record my vlogs. And then I would go for the 2875 or 2470 to complete that. And if I had to choose three lenses that I could use, 
I would go for the 1635, the 2875, and probably the 24 millimeter f1.4 because I really like that lens when it comes to taking photos. So I really hope that you found this video helpful and that you feel more secure in buying your new lens for your camera and uh, if you like this video do give it a thumbs up because it does help a lot so thanks so much for that and if you haven't subscribed yet that'd be highly appreciated so uh press that button and uh, thank you so much for watching and uh until next time take care